Adam Montgomery on trial for the murder of his daughter, Harmony Montgomery. We're hearing lots of arguments, and in some of the opening arguments for his defense, the strategy seems to be blame other people, blame Kayla, blame anyone except for Adam for being in this situation, saying that, well, it was covering something up. It happened there, and, and he was just the good husband, boyfriend, father, whatever you want to call him, and he was simply trying to do his best so that the other children would not be taken away from them because, well, I don't think he saw that part through of why children should be taken away from you for, I don't know, living in your car and beating your daughter. That might be a good reason. Joining me to discuss, Jennifer Coffin, after retired FBI special agent, uh, I mean, the reasoning is insane. Um, one could almost believe it. Um, they Both of them do not seem like the most credible of witnesses by any stretch of the imagination. But how much of this uh, is he said, she said, and how much are we ever really truly going to know the truth about what happened here to Harmony? Well, I think Kayla is actually believable on the stand. I mean, the things she's saying obviously very, uh, I mean, they're implicating her. Mm -hmm. It's, it's gross. I, I think all of us are sitting here saying, wow, it's terrible that the prosecution had to make this deal with the devil to get the, uh, the bigger devil, mm -hmm. but that's what, that's what had to have happen. So I believe her. I, I think she comes off credible. I think the other thing to look at is uh, his background. Now, will the jury get to see that? Hmm. no, Probably not much of it, if any, in terms of his criminal record, unless somehow the defense opens up that door and it somehow gets in. Uh, but I think one thing that is very interesting in this is the fact he's refusing to go to court. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that is going to sit well at all with the jurors. Uh, he says he doesn't want to go to court because he doesn't want to have the anal examinations uh, that he has to go through uh, uh, when he goes to court. Uh, poor Adam, right? Uh, the bottom line is, I don't think that's it. I think he does not want to face sort of hearing about everything and uh, being looked at in a downward fashion by these jurors and everyone in the courtroom. That's what I think. Well, I mean, judging by, you know, what we saw in the interactions of him with the interrogation video, with uh, the arrest video, and, and obviously neither of us are psychologists, but uh, I, I was pretty easy, I think, to glean off of that, that you're dealing with basically a malignant narcissist here that was able to, if, if not a flat out psychopath or sociopath that was able to, to carry these sort of things out and then sit there and, and lie about it and sit there and, and almost believe that he doesn't have to tell his story. He was more concerned about getting a cigarette on every single one of those videos than he was of the well-being of his daughter. So is it a surprise that he's not able to go and face the music? Because if you, if you understand narcissists, narcissistic personality disorders and such, the it, it's, it's like the wicked witch of the West and, and somebody is there to throw water on them. Uh, you know, they, they cannot go, go near that sort of opposing theories of, of, of what they believe of themselves because it's it's so toxic it almost becomes like an exorcism to them <laughs> because it's oh you're coming at me with the truth and they can't handle it i mean I, i'm wondering if that's really you know that, that's what we're dealing with here yeah i think we are and again obviously i'm not a doctor and i'm not trying to make a diagnosis i'm just talking from a place mm -hmm. of dealing with a lot of these people over 20 oh, yeah, years yeah. and it's so evident tony when you see how he acts and those narcissistic behaviors, uh, they they actually believe that other people, you know, want to do these favors for them, that they're justified in killing a child that that, you know, is stuck in a car and has a, a an accident on themselves. I, you know, I keep thinking, Tony, of of little Harmony and the fact she's in this car. It's cold. Where was she going to go to the bathroom? You know, walk outside the door. I mean, it's just so humiliating and degrading how this child was kept and and really the reason, apparently, uh, that she was beaten to death. Yeah. Uh, so I have to just quickly talk on the victim side of it because it's just so, I mean, it's so sick. And yeah. for him to think he could at all be justified and to be so smug, if I had one word for him, when you look at him and wa watch him walk into the courtroom during these interviews, 
he's so smug and yeah. arrogant and you know, the world owes me an audience and I've done nothing wrong. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's shocking. I believe on, on your Twitter, you had mentioned that he's, he's refusing to come into trial. I think my reply was like, well, it's more opportunity to get shanked if he's going to stay. In prison. <laughs> yeah, <you laughs> yeah. did like, like find the, find the rainbow and the ponies in what's going And I guess that's a rainbow in the, but let's talk more about, um, it, it, the the failures here in this beyond even Adam Montgomery oh, yeah. and obviously Kayla Montgomery too, uh, I mean those are the, the the first lines of defense here that that should have been you know at, at the very least going oh my God something happened Kayla should have done something, the fact that she got away with what she got away with is shocking but then we're starting to hear testimony also from from family members from Adam's uncle uh, from a friend from uh, a love interest from uh, even uh, child welfare people. Um, and it's not like Harmony wasn't on their radar. Uh, I mean, there's there's more people here that I guess had awareness of Harmony than I was expecting. And I guess that's what makes it even more sad is because it, it still took three years for anyone to go, where did she go? Oh, yeah. She was failed by everyone, family, friends, schools, uh, uh, also by welfare services, uh, it, she should have been on the radar. She really was on the radar, as you mentioned. But you know what this came down to, Tony? It came down to a check, a check that Adam Montgomery and Kayla were receiving every month in subsistence for her, even though she was dead. Mm -hmm. It really came down to money. I think that's the only reason they wanted custody of these children, because for them, it's it's a check. And, the, mm -hmm. and that is the true failure. And then these systems saying that they want to put kids with family and placing that above all else without really even considering yeah. how they're being kept. Yeah. I mean, that's a toxic, toxic failure of our system. Something that was in place in the 1970s based on a study that has since been debunked, but that's how our system still works. That above all else, reunification of the families doesn't matter if the parents have track records of being complete abusive horrible junkies uh reunification because the second they get clean for a little bit well let's get that kid right back in there because relapses aren't like 90 some percent likely uh let's get that kid back into that environment so they can be there when that happens i don't know how we have a system that operates this way or why we haven't been able to change anything in regards to, to such a flawed way of thinking yeah you know what i think about too tony and of course we see it every day in the news, but all the other harmonies out there, mm -hmm. there's so many more harmonies out there that are being abused, that are uh, with their families strictly for the paycheck and, and CPS is looking the other way. Mm -hmm. And you hope that the, you know, media attention, social media attention of this case might ignite other family members and, you know, other people that know of a child in a similar situation to insist with law enforcement and social services to go and look and get that child out of that situation. I mean, that's yeah. all we can help now with the, the case of Harmony. I think Adam will be found guilty and he'll spend the rest of his life in prison. No death penalty in New Hampshire. Yeah. I, I rest of his life. And I think that's a relative term because I'm guessing a lot of the inmates aren't going to take too kindly to the story. So span of life is, is I think the question there. Uh, but no, you're you're right. There needs to be there needs to be some sort of overhaul on this because yes, there there's many more Harmony Montgomerys out there, uh, and it and many that that you know how many do we know just that that the world doesn't know that don't exist. I mean, there's the ones that are there. People are collecting the check on, but how many kids you know disappeared during COVID? The the numbers on that are shocking. Of the numbers that never returned back to school, coming from not great homes. What happened there? Uh, and we don't have the resources to go and look into all of these things, something that we we certainly should. Why is that? Why do we have a, a th this being the issue that we have in our country? And it is a big issue. It affects so many people. I mean, I think everybody in their life can take a look and go, I know of at least one family or one kid or, or something, a, a somewhat personal level, at least one span of removal from a friend or somebody that your, your kids go to school with where you suspect maybe this could be some sort of a situation that's going on. That's a lot of people to, for everybody to have that type of a, a connection in relation to this sort of uh, environment, but we don't do anything about it. We're just like, well, to each their own, you all got your freedom. 
Yeah, you know, and I'm going to get a teeny bit political here. Yeah. I'm not a political person, mm -hmm. but in regard to when you look at the border crisis, I'm going to make a quick nexus here. Okay. Millions of people coming in, Tony, right? And yep. now they're putting millions and millions of dollars and giving credit cards to the people coming across the border. We're giving them housing. We're giving their, them food. We're giving them, you know, health care. And, and, and these are illegal immigrants that we don't even know their background, right? But yet we don't spend the money on our welfare, our child welfare system to have more capable people, not only numbers, but to increase salaries so that the people doing this job are getting paid well mm -hmm. and have the time and resources to look in on these individuals. I think that that's, for me, that's what it comes down to. Our child welfare system, which should be the most important thing, is the least important thing. They're paid terribly. Their, their, their uh, caseloads are gigantic. And we have the money for mm -hmm. federal assistance. Yeah. But again, it's now diverted in to me a very wrong way. And and we just it's a priority thing. It's unbelievable to me that our children aren't coming first. Is it is it because it's it's too icky of a subject that the, the general public doesn't like to pay a lot of attention to this uh, and, and vote in the ways of, of this interest? Because, again, it's just you don't want a lot of people don't want to absorb this stuff. It's it's yuck. It's horrible. It makes you feel bad. But the reality is so many people are suffering like this. And, and it, it just seems that, well, here's the people we elected and here's what we're dealing with. And not a lot is going on in this direction to, to help the, the problem at all. I think I think a lot of people do have the, the, you know, the belief. And I think most of us do. Right. What happens behind our doors are sort of our family business. Mm -hmm. and, and but I think most people are normal families. Yeah. <laughs> you know, no. They're not killing their children. They're not, you know, uh, wasted on drugs all day long. Uh, it, so that's why they want their privacy protected. And, and they don't want, you know, the government coming in if a child has a bruise and, and being looked at under a microscope, perhaps. Mm -hmm. But that's really not what we're talking about here. Yeah. We're talking about the most egregious of egregious situations that they're are, isn't enough people to to really handle and the uh, you know government agency situation so uh it's gotta it's gotta change tony and, and i really hope it does that that children should be first our number one monetary yeah. concern i think hey it's tony bruski if you like the podcast be sure to like subscribe and press that bell so you don't miss any of our updates on the cases we're following for you right here at the hidden killers podcast and true crime today and thanks